Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joni Young. If you're new here, thanks so much for joining. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this fantasy landscape with a large oval world kind of in the center here and possibly a few other things that we'll add. I'm not sure at this point exactly what I'm adding, so you're going to watch this come to life as it did for me during the process. So let's begin. I'm going to list all the colors and brushes below in the description. I'll go over them quickly right now. We've got burnt sienna, turquoise, light blue violet, white, phthalo blue, black, sap green, lemon yellow, yellow ochre. Might be adding a few other colors along the way. We're working on an 11 by 14 stretched canvas that's been primed with black paint. It's just an old painting that I covered up. So we're going to begin with the oval here in the center. I've got my number 16 filbert brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet first and I'm going to take some white and a little bit of that light blue and I'm just gonna without thinking too much about it just begin so just a large oval and don't worry about it looking too perfect because we're gonna have a lot of foliage vines flowers etc around there okay so we just want the basic shape right now and then we're going to paint it inside with a little bit of yellow and some more white because we're working on a black canvas we might need a little bit more white and yellow to make this really show up but I do like working on a black canvas uh, because it's a nice way to create it's a dramatic way to create light in a painting um, because you already have all of this shadow for your contrast or contrast and to build up uh, the light with. The only thing that can be tricky, like I said, is trying to cover the black up with some white. With a clean filbert, the same one, I'm going to take some black with my sap green, a little bit of yellow, and I'll begin painting some trees. So I'll just do a little line like this, a little line by turning my brush sideways, and then I'm going to start pushing and tapping side to side. And see how easily you get those branches by using this filbert brush. You can do it with a little fan brush as well. So I'll switch over to a fan brush right now and show you guys how to do that and give you the options so you see the differences. So I just got my mini two inch right here. Or number two, I'm not sure if it's a two inch, it's just number two. And I'm going to take, pull into my sap green, just so you know how to load a brush if you're not sure, if you've never used a fan brush before. Pull and turn. Alright, and let's just add another little tree right here, turning the brush sideways to do a little tree trunk. And then I'm going to use just the corner of my brush here to get these little baby branches where we want them to be nice and small and then as the tree goes down we'll begin to use more and more the full width of the brush you can make it as tall as you want okay so there you have both trees done in different brushes and maybe we'll just keep this going I can pull and flick like this I get my brush a little bit wet loosen up that paint and I'll begin tapping 
Now you can also change the direction of your branches, make them come out like this. But I think I'm going to now switch over to my filbert brush again. I just really enjoy using the filbert brush. I feel like I have a little bit more control. And it's a little bit more neat and tidy. Okay, and then I'm just going to tap down here. So I've got my my puppy Tilly in here with me today. Yesterday, uh, I could hear her barking from inside the house, and I felt bad. So, like I said, I usually keep my studio cold to keep my paint from drying out quickly. Um, but she wasn't very happy. She hates it when I leave her out. So I cranked up the heat, and it's nice and toasty, warm in here, and she's joining me. So hopefully she's. Uh, well behaved and doesn't all of a sudden start barking from hearing something outside. So I'm just going to continue down here, adding this green. And then I'm just going to gently pull and sweep. Sweep up like that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow and white with that green. I'm going to go back to that and I'm going to add a little ring around here, almost like a frame. Take a little bit of water. It kind of looks like an egg at this point. <laughs> I've actually got a video out for painting, hand painting eggs. For Easter time where I paint landscapes like this on them. Maybe I'll leave a link down below for you guys who might be interested in that, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to take some of my phthalo blue now with a little bit of black and I'm going to come right inside and it kind of mixes in a little bit with um, the greens and the yellows and get a nice a nice kind of a color in there. I'm gonna take a little bit of white and yellow and add another little line right there. And it blends softly into that blue and it looks really pretty. Carry a little bit of that down through here. Okay, I'm going to continue with the same brush and tap in to that burnt sienna a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of black. So we've got a little bit of each color on the very bottom of the brush. And I'm going to begin pulling it flat and kind of just wiggling a little bit. And I'm going to come right over here and then down. Just going to make it look like, I'm going to pick up a little bit more black, make it look like vines and trees. Just 
So we're going to try to set this back and pull in some foliage for the foreground. I'm going to pick up a little bit of green now with that black. And I'll begin to pull over. So I'm going to start right here, guys, and I'm going to make a vine that looks like it's twisting over. So pull and then down. And you can do this all the way up there. It's just a really fun, whimsical sort of a look to a painting that I really like. I'm going to take this yellow and white right on the tip of my brush, and we'll begin adding a little highlight very subtly like that just to make that stand out and if you want it to be a little bit brighter you can push or some little leaves push wiggle twist off push wiggle twist off into a little point like that and let's see what else we can do let's take those same colors bring them over here maybe add some more little vines like that now I'm going to take one of my new brushes here that I got, I don't know if I you guys saw this video yet, but I got a bunch of these really pretty new crystal rainbow brushes off of Amazon. They're makeup brushes, and a few of you guys asked for the link, so I did leave that uh, below in my description of my last video, and I will try to do the same for this one. They're really, really soft. Probably, I would say this. these are the nicest brushes I've used um, so far. So I'm going to continue to try out new makeup brushes. Okay, so I'm going to create some more foliage. I'm going to tap in very lightly to that sap green. And then a little bit, let's switch over here to our turquoise. And I'll just start adding a bit like this, going in different directions. Maybe it's coming from inside there. Bit more of that turquoise. You can even make it look like it's twisting around like that. I'm going to take some, a little bit of white and yellow, and I still got that turquoise on there. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to let that blend in. And so this is the color we're left with now. So turquoise and yellow make a really, really beautiful, bright, grassy green, like chartreuse. And I'll start adding a little bit right there. And you know what? I'm going to switch over to my right hand um, just so that you guys can see what I'm doing here. Actually, I uh, told you guys yesterday about my... Uh, story of when I was little and I broke my left wrist right during grade three when we were learning how to uh, write, handwrite and everything so I had I was forced to learn how to use my right hand so that's why I'm able um, to use both. So I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise now along with my phthalo blue and a little bit of sap green. So I really want to um, have as many greens as I can in this painting. I want it to feel very earthy. So what I did there is I just pulled, lightly pulled and flicked down. And then I'm going to lightly overlap like that. I'm going to go ahead and do the same sort of thing right up here. And... I'm going to have to take out my canvas from here because it's getting in the way, so I'm just going to undo this. And hopefully the 
stays in place for me. I want it to stay in place so that I can. I'm just gonna move the camera a little bit so you guys can hopefully see that a little bit better. So back to those colors. I've got the blue and the green. And I'm just going to start sliding my brush like this. And then I'm going to come over and drop. I'm going to add another waterfall to my painting. I haven't added waterfalls in a little while, so you guys know that I really love waterfalls and staircases. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of white, mix it up with whatever's left in my brush and a bit of that yellow. I'm going to tap lightly over here and I'm going to start to pull and drop. And then lighten this up a little bit by blending that in. Well, that's pretty. See, I just love painting on a black canvas. Okay, and I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush. So I even got a little filbert brush here. And sorry, these none of these brushes are numbered. I think that's because they're makeup brushes. I'm going to take a little bit of black, green, that sap green, tap the two and push it on the end of my brush. So I want to add some shadow in here to build up some uh, bright yellowy moss that I'm going to add. And maybe some more shadow in here. This tree a little bit darker, I think. So this is when having my studio nice and warm really comes in handy. So I can paint quickly like this and layer quite easily. Okay, I'm just gonna over from this side here and start tapping in some shadow. I'm just going to pull and drop some of that black with that blue and green, just something dark so that I have um, a good contrast, balance of light and shadow. Right there I'm going to add some more blue. Right like that. Some little lines in here. And then I just decide right here I'm going to right now add a little bit of dripping moss. Let's take the turquoise and the yellow because I like those colors for a nice bright green. If you don't have a nice bright chartreuse green you can make it with those two colors. And I'm just going to tap. That way and then I turn the brush this way so you get taps and leaves on either side or you tap on either side to get leaves on either side. You guys know what I mean. And then pull in a little bit of black with my brush just to make 
maybe make this stand out a little bit more right because light on light won't work so right in this area where it's really light you might need a little bit of well you definitely need some darker paint for it to show up Okay, I like the way that looks. There's a little something right there. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm washing all of that black out of my brush. It's nice and clean again. I'm going to go into my yellow and a little bit of white. You can mix those three colors, the turquoise, yellow, and white together. Get a nice amount of paint on the end of your brush to work with and I'm going to start right back here little moss covered rocks I'm going to add some of that bright green back here it's not pretty There's a few little bushes back here. It's getting lighter and lighter back there. Drawing us into that inviting, warm sunlight. We've got a little bed of grass right here. We could go take a nap or have a picnic. Do you guys make up little stories for your paintings? It's a good idea to do that. You just gotta imagine yourself in your painting. Create that's how you create your own little worlds. Especially in times like these when we're in lockdown during coronavirus and can't get away and travel. Well, you can through art. Can art, painting reading books, writing books, all those arts can take you away. Yeah, a little highlight up here to this tree. Give this one a nice little glow as well. I'm having so much fun with this painting. I hope you guys are enjoying this too. Ooh, we've got some just dripping down here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of black, black and green, and maybe we'll have uh, some large leaves right here. If we don't like it, we can change it. So we'll do that dark underpainting first. Then I'll switch over to my other side. And I think I'll add some turquoise and some yellow. Dab a little bit of white in there. Okay, so my brush is loaded up. And I'm going to very lightly push, wiggle, let off. You might have to do that a few times just to get the light that you achieve, want to achieve. So I'm going to take a bit more white this time. They're all going to be in different directions, right? They're not all going to be the same. They're going to be smaller in some areas, so you can just kind of tap with the side of your brush. Why don't we just have this? Let's just have this coming right down into the water. And then we've just got this little reflection down here. Using the same brush, 
just soft little flicks like this. And then with another brush that's a bit damp, you sweep sideways like that and it'll look like water, the reflection in the water. Just put a little bit more pointy on the end. Okay, I think it's time to add our little waterfall right here. Now I have two options. I can use a flat brush like this, and I can also use a fan brush like this. So I think I'm going to demonstrate a waterfall done in each of these brushes just because when you guys come to my channel I want you to learn the most that you can so I'm going to demonstrate both so you guys get a good idea of what each one looks like. I'm going to get my brush wet a little bit and as soon as I put it in the water it separates into sections like that and I always tell you guys how helpful that is. I want to take green first, that greeny yellow now it's kind of all spread out again. That's okay though. What The reason why, oh I didn't tell you, the reason why I like it when it uh, separates into sections is because you get those natural little separations in your waterfall that show the rocks and the, uh, the whatever's behind the waterfall. Because you don't want it to be completely solid, right? So to, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just tap like this and then it'll separate again. Okay, so I'm just doing the first layer in this light green. Maybe maybe it's going to start from back there, wiggle with the corner of my brush, come right out here, and then I drop. So just like that. And then I can go this way. Okay, so just a little something like that. Then I'll take white. I want it to be a little bit brighter and drop. And I'll drop again. I'm going to kind of just pull, wiggle across like this. Now I'm going to switch to this flat brush just so I can softly blend. just picked up a little bit more paint on my brush in order to do this. Noticing a big difference. You see how this would normally blend quite easily if my paint wasn't drying so fast, but because I wanted my dog to not be sad and keep me company in my studio today, I turned up the heat. What we do for our dogs. Okay, so I'm just pulling out a pretty little reflection down here and light little spray from that waterfall so it's just going to be kind of blurry and fuzzy here so I'm doing lots of little circles tightly together just like that at the base. Okay I'm going to do a little bit more before I switch over to my other waterfall so I'm just going to take a bit more of this white in with the yellowy green. I'm going to come right here and add another, another little bit of waterfall. Just a little bit more light right down there. to my little flat brush. Here's another little little tiny filbert brush. I'm going to go back to my yellow and add in a little bit more. You see these ideas kind of just start coming to me as I'm painting and then I just decide 
what I want to do, kind of spur of the moment. So that's why sometimes my process is a little bit all over the place because what I'm doing is the first time. <clears throat> this is organic painting for you guys. This is very uh, unplanned. And I like to show you guys my process. And especially you patrons out there that I appreciate so much. I appreciate all my subscribers, but my patrons really um, uh, have been great supporters and have shown me a lot of appreciation through joining my art community over there. So I like to give you guys a glimpse of my process and how I paint unplanned sometimes. And, you know, sometimes I'll just see a beautiful image and then it, <coughs> excuse me, takes off from there. My mind just starts going, my imagination starts going, and I have so many different ideas. Okay, so something kind of like that. I think I want to just brush over a little bit of that yellow into this white. So I've actually used three different brushes now for waterfalls. And I promised you guys I was going to use this flat one for the next waterfall and I'm going to do that right now. So let's take our greeny yellow color again here. I want to have it right on the tip of my brush. Hopefully you guys can see that clearly. And I'm going to have, oh let's see, maybe it starts to drop down here. And then one other one right there. So I like to have multiple layers to my uh, waterfalls. I think it really adds some neat dimension and mood. Create a little bit more of a glow with whatever's left over in my brush. I'm going to use that right now and tap over this, kind of scumble around. Gently blend out the bottom here. Blend out the bottom and then Add a few little lines, little ripples in the water like that. I'm going to take a little bit of white on the tip of my brush. And so you just line it up, pull and drop. And then you can turn your brush straight up and down like that to get little singular ones. If you want more of a little spray at the bottom, or maybe there's some lily pads, just adding a little bit of white like that. A little something kind of magical looking down in here. Okay, I want to add a few more colors now. Then I've got another filbert here. This one is a number four. I'm just being lazy. I don't want to bother washing out brushes right now. But I would recommend if you don't want to wash your brushes out right away, let them sit in the water though. Don't leave them out to dry when using um, acrylic paint because it's gonna wreck your brushes. So I'm dipping into my light blue violet now and then this color is very complementary of course to the green and the turquoise and I'm just gonna very lightly a little bit incorporate a little bit of this violet here which is so pretty And I'm going to start adding some flowers. 
We've got some little forget-me-nots. I love those all those old-fashioned Victorian flowers. Forget-me-nots is definitely one. And bluebells. These could be little bluebells. Could also be some wisteria. Add a little bit, incorporate a little bit of that violet up here. It's funny, this is uh, called a blue when it really does look, well it depends what you have it paired with in a painting. So it looks purple, really really does look violety purple here paired with the lime greens that we have. Okay, so that's something to think about too when you're painting if you want your blue violet to look, yeah, like more like um, purple tone to it, then use a lot of this yellowy green. Maybe I'll just pull a little bit of that in here too. Why not? They look so pretty together, and we need some cool tones. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white, so I'll just show you. I'm going to lighten this up a bit. And a few little highlights here. So just a few areas like that. Right in, even right in here looks really pretty. It just gives you, if glow was a color, it would be this color. This just glows. It creates that beautiful morning mist, fog, magical morning look. Take a little bit more of this blue violet which also looks nice with turquoise. I'm going to take a little bit of that turquoise now. Oops. Now back to my phthalo blue. A little bit of phthalo blue in here. Add a little layer of this over those greens the black. So now that it's dry, right, those colors are dry, we can add a little filter, I call it. Like when you put on a pair of sunglasses that are tinted, it gives everything a filtered look of whatever the lenses are, whatever color they are. That's kind of like what this is. And that's really a neat process it's fun to do maybe I'll, I'll add you guys know I really love ferns I think I want to add a little fern in here so I'm going to take kind of just a mixture here of turquoise yellow a little bit of white and sap green and I like to use a small filbert brush for them let's see here tap tap so that's not showing up enough. I'm going to need to pick up some more white with that. So a little, a little bit like that. And maybe I'll put one right in here too. A 
lots of little lines like that and then you can turn your brush this way to the other side of, of your little fern. I love ferns. I love ferns and moss and vines. I think they add a lot of whimsy, whimsiness. They're very fairy tale like. Maybe, maybe it comes from watching Disney movies a lot. I think Disney movies always had a lot of, or have a lot of, beautiful foliage in them and ferns. Where else? I think I'll just do one more here, guys, and then I'll call this painting done. We'll have this one kind of turning. Turning like that. I said one more. And I'm doing two. And I think I want to take phthalo and light blue violet. So a bit of that. And then I just get it right on the end of my brush, both of those colors. I'm gonna add a few little, oh, isn't that cool? I've got some green left in my brush. Just pushing and tapping. And I'm getting all sorts of neat little colors in there, so those are kind of happy little accidents. Bob Ross would say. I can't believe how many of you guys. <laughs> it's always so funny and very flattering. I'm a huge Bob Ross fan. He's actually got me really inspired from a, a young age to paint, but so many of you guys are sen sending me messages or commenting on my paintings telling me that I'm like the modern day or female Bob Ross. And I just love that. I think that's so cool. So thanks guys. I'm definitely not trying to be like Bob Ross. Um, this is just my painting process. This is how I talk when I paint. I kind of get in the zone and it makes me feel very relaxed. I take some white on the end of my brush. And I'm going to get a little highlight. There we go. That's what it was missing. I needed a little bit more highlight to the tops of these waterfalls. And I'm going to take a little bit of lemon yellow. And a little bit more in here. Okay, so we're all done. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching this. I want to thank you again so much for all your support on my channel, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and here on YouTube. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. If you haven't yet, please go and check out my Patreon page where you can uh, show uh, some support for me if you appreciate my lessons and you're learning from them. And leave a comment below, give this video a big thumbs up please, and subscribe to my channel for more free art inspiration. Take care, everybody. Happy painting, and I'll see you next time. Bye!